I am a student from Indonesia. My question is, how do I refute the arguments of Christians who want to prove from the Bible that Jesus was the Lord by quoting the Gospel of John, chapter number 8, verse number 58, which reads, I existed before Abraham. What Brother Faris is referring to is the verse of the Bible from the Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 58, in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Before Abraham was I am. And there are many Christians who quote this verse from the Bible and say, From this verse we come to know very clearly that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was Almighty God. And when we ask them, How does this verse prove? that Jesus Christ, peace be upon the Almighty God, they give two reasons. Number one, they say, because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was present before Abraham, peace be upon him, that means he was God. The reply to this argument is that every creation of Almighty God existed in the knowledge of Almighty God before he was created. Every human being that came on the face of the earth. Before he came, he existed in the knowledge of Almighty God. And there are verses from the Bible which can prove this point. If you read the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1, verse number 5, Almighty God says, <coughs> Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I made you a prophet over the nations. Here Almighty God is talking to Prophet Jeremiah that before he was formed in the belly of his mother, Almighty God knew his existence. Before he came out of the womb, Almighty God has already sanctified him and made him a prophet to the nations. That means every human being was present in the knowledge of God before he came. So similarly, if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was there before he came or before Abraham, peace be upon him, it's nothing new. This is what the Bible says. Every human being was there in the knowledge of God before he came on the face of the earth. There is a second argument given by some Christians, quoting this verse from the Gospel of John chapter 5. Verse number 58, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that before Abraham was I am. And they say, I am is the proper noun of Almighty God. It is the name of Almighty God. And to prove their point, they quote the verse of the glorious Quran from the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, verse number 14. When Moses, peace be upon him, he asks Almighty God, that when he goes to the children of Israel, how will he call God? What name will he give? And when he goes to the children of Israel, how will he address that the God of your fathers? What name should he take? So Almighty God replies in the book of Exodus, chapter number 3. Allah rep Almighty God replies in the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, verse number 14, that God says to Moses, I am what I am. And he says to Moses that when you go to the children of Israel, tell them, I am has sent me to you. So here we come to know from this verse of the Bible that I am is the proper name of Almighty God. But normally, a proper name of Almighty God, when it is translated into other languages, the proper noun remains the same, it's not translated. There can be certain occasions where required it can be translated, but generally a proper noun is not translated. For example, if I say in English that Mr. Black has come to my house, I cannot say in Arabic that Mr. Aswad came to my house, or in Hindi or Urdu, Mr. Kala came to my house. Mr. Black will remain black, even in Arabic, even in Urdu, even in Hindi. Similarly, this is the English translation 
where God says, I am that I am. But when you read the Hebrew word used in the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, verse number 14, the Hebrew word is ye hi hi he, asher ye hi hi he. And when you read in Greek, it is ego emi. So the word keeps on changing, indicating it's not a proper noun. And as I said, some places it can be translated, but here it's not required. But even if I agree with them, for the sake of argument, oh, okay, it's a proper noun, and it was translated, it was a requirement, no problem. If I am was the name of Almighty God, what does it mean? That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5, Gospel of John, chapter number 8, verse number 58, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Before Abraham was, I am. If you translate I am as God, it will mean before Abraham was God. So where is the problem? And we do agree that before Abraham, peace be upon him, was Almighty God. So where does it prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God? So then they come up with the argument, but I am means I am. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So what they do, they want to translate I am as God. We have no problem. But at the same time, they want to take, besides mentioning, even the meaning. So they say before Abraham was God, and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, same, before Abraham was I am. That means Jesus was there before Abraham. It is impossible. You cannot have the complete cake, eat the complete cake, and also keep the complete cake. It's not possible. So this is the big illogical fallacy that they want to use the proper noun at the same time take the meaning together. It's not possible. You cannot have the complete cake, that is eat the complete cake, as well as keep the complete cake. So the argument of Gospel of John, chapter number 8, verse number 58, claiming that Jesus Christ claimed divinity is totally false. It clearly mentions only that before Abraham, peace be upon him, was Almighty God, or before Abraham, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was there in the knowledge of Almighty God. Hope that answers the question.